Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Xfinity desk. And boy, we are ready to get into the brackets. But before we get into the brackets, we are joined by none other than Ryan Towie. Towie, good to have you here, man. It's good to be here. And then also, of course, the premier EU caster. Premier. You keep you keep introducing me as that, man. I, I don't it's know if best. it counts, though. No, it definitely I mean, counts. Sims is probably better than me, right? Maybe. Uh, the jury's out on you that know, one. Jury's I, think you, I think you're good. I think you're good. <laughs> Yeah, you're good. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, we're getting ready to get into the bracket stages here. We just saw a lot of incredible matches in the group stage. Saw a couple upsets as well. Let's take a look at the bracket, though. Here we are looking at the loser's bracket, which we will see starting tomorrow, which will kick off with Team Immunity, Soar Gaming, London Conspiracy, and Supremacy. We'll see who they match up again uh, later today. Uh, once we find out who loses the matches from the winner's bracket and take a look at this, we've got Optic Gaming versus Fab Games Esports, Splice versus Luminosity Gaming, which we'll be seeing here in just a moment, Straight Rippin' versus TMMT Crowd Pleasers, and then finally Team Liquid versus Team Envious. And you can catch all four of these matches on the mainstream or the Bravo stream, which you are watching right now, twitch.tv slash halo or twitch.tv. TV slash ESL underscore Halo. That's but the one you want. That's, that's the one you want. The B stream, best stream. Trust. B, yeah. The B stands for best. B for not, best. Not, not Bravo. Completely agree. Couldn't <laughs> agree more, but let's get into it. We've got Splice versus Luminosity Gaming. Towie, tell me a little bit about these guys. What do you think? Man, this is going to be a tough, tough matchup for both teams. Splice coming off their big win earlier today against Envy. Everyone is looking out for this team. Obviously filled with some really, really young talent that nobody... Uh, is afraid of anymore. You have Boo Boo Doo Boo, Shooter, Falcated, Shotzi. No one uh, is unaware of these players at all. Going over to Luminosity, crowd favorite Ninja. Yeah, yeah. Looking at Luminosity, uh, talking about Victory X as well, being the oldest player here out of all the players. And yeah, Harry, I'll let you take Luminosity <laughs> oh, from man. here. How many events has Victory X been to now? So many. It's crazy. We get like this weird little talent binder, and it's about two pages worth of just like old school North American Halo events dating back to like 2005. It's crazy. This guy's been around forever. Luminosity, obviously, second in their pool. Not what they wanted, really. They wanted to win their pool to give themselves the easiest bracket. Instead, they came second, and now they have to go up against a fired up Splice team who, at this event, have looked really strong despite their lack of experience. So not only do we have the oldest Halo player on Luminosity Game, we have the youngest, youngest. player on the opposing team Splice. That's going to be Shotzi, the youngest player here, 15 years old, just 15-year-old Phenom, literally just putting on a show left and right all the time. But let's take a quick look at the series layout here. We're going to kick things off with the Rig Strongholds, followed by Truth Slayer, Coliseum Capture the Flag, Eden Strongholds, and if we make it past game number four, Plaza Slayer, Truth Capture the Flag, and Regret Slayer. Towie, tell me your thoughts. What are you thinking now once you've seen these game types? I mean, judging from the way these teams have played each other a lot online, Luminosity manages to have a, a an upper hand in a lot of the objective games, uh, especially the Strongholds games in particular. You know, they're a very objective, efficient team. Right, you are, and there we are getting actually straight into the match, not wasting any time. We're going to kick things off with Victory X. Strongholds on the rig. Victory X making a quick move over towards the nest. You see a railgun come flying in. Not going to connect with any player here on Luminosity. L-Town goes down in the kill feed. You see Falcated go down, and there you go. Shotzi is going to connect with this railgun and look to gain some control here. Yeah, and this is a big, big play out of Shotzi. Obviously, Rig Stronghold, Red Team, they have a pretty serious advantage right off the start. You know, the score, however, 5-1 to one in favor of LG. Not too bad of a start for them, considering they did start from blue. All right, now Shotzi just trying to stay alive, does drop down into the pits of the Rig now. Just taking it slow, no need to rush. Spots Victory X, that's a kill. Looking to get the double, not able to connect it there. His teammate will fall down right next to him, but look at this, three down for LG. So Shotzi does not need to rush in that type of scenario. He's getting shot from the back. What a kill, taking down Ninja. This man is still alive, putting shots down on Victory X, turns around, getting ready to fight two players here in the hallway. Almost gets the stick. Not gonna happen though, just still alive though. This man, it is so hard to kill this guy. He is just in and out of error everywhere. Just 
making himself such a nuisance, putting a few shots on a player here, a few shots on another player there. Now, the biggest thing to take away while watching him, two, two things, his positioning, where he puts himself in a position where players aren't expecting him to be shooting from, especially with Railgun, and two, his movement. He moves different than most other players. You can just tell the way he positions himself and the way he enters and leaves different engagements and battles. So talented. Yeah, and then playing quite aggressive there through the camo hall. We're going to move over to Boo Boo Dubu as he's making his way over towards the engine. Getting some shots over here from top tower. Has a teammate pushing up as well. This is going to be one down for both teams. But Boo Boo Dubu has his eyes on these players spawning by Bunker. He has got them completely trapped here over by the engine and forcing them to go out the other way. Yeah, camouflage coming up soon though, Mike. So keep an eye on that. The scatter shot still in the back pocket. So. Boo Dubu here still with the scatter shot. If he can corral this camouflage as well, he could be a very dangerous man on this map. We've seen the damage the scatter shot can do. If you apply a camouflage and even a railgun with that too, Boo Dubu could be really stacked right here if he picks up this camo. It looks like a player was able to get that camo. That's Ninja, but he is Boo Dubu's gonna fall and it looks like Ninja is gonna stay alive. And this was a huge play out of LG. They were all spawning up there at once as Boo Boo got both scatter and railgun and they don't have any points to show for it. LG is still accumulating points. That is a big turn in the game. All right, Harry, taking a look at this here. I mean, Victory X with the Railgun. What do you what do you see from LG? What are they doing so right right now? Well, so far, like, they've just been controlling the map. Like, like Ryan said, I mean, they've, despite Splice getting so many kills, Luminosity still with the control. They're just rotations, man. Their rotations and their movement have been so smart. I mean, we saw at the start of the game, you know, you said uh, the red team has an advantage because they get the weapons. Luminosity actually kind of counteracted that by sending two guys to the nest. So they got basement and nest control early on, and that really set the pace for the rest of this game so far. Yeah, and right there, I, I really disagree with the positioning that Victory had. I, I think he kind of got caught out at Big Door there trying to get a pickoff kill when they had two dead. Uh, he managed to die with both weapons after they got two kills, and now Splice, uh, with two strongholds, starting to finally accumulate some time with a bit of control for themselves. LG definitely could have played that a little bit better. There you see Shotzi picking up another railgun kill. It's like this man is a magnet to that weapon. Has the scatter as well. That's going to be two down for LG. As we see Shotzi just try and stay alive and get his shields back. That player is going off the map. A little bit of a skydiving move there. Going to fall off. And now we see some control here. Some nice control here from the guys on Splice. They are holding basement, they are holding nest, and just trying to keep that other team at bay by the bunker right now. You can see how excited Shotzi gets for a second, trying to do this jump all the way up towards that snipe spawn there to pick up that new railgun. It's a very difficult jump, especially when you only have, well, now no ammo in either weapon, so. Well, he will be taken down, so we'll see the Grail go, in, go into the hands of Saiyan as he's getting ready to get control of the basement, has his teammates all around him right now. Splice was able to catch up just a little bit, but Camo's coming up, and he is not going to be able to get that at that perfect moment. Let's see which player. That looks like Boo Boo Jubu is able to get that Camo, but he's not able to stay on the map, I don't think so. He is. He actually is. So, and He also has Railgun in his back pocket as well, so Camo Rail now in the favor of Splice. They still Still have control, just as I say that though, Luminosity coming back and getting a stronghold. But with Boo Boo, uh, with Camo Rail, this is going to be a very dangerous player. I would almost like to see him either flank round with this or get to that white hall corner. And Splice, despite them getting Camo Rail, it was Luminosity with total control. But it looks like Basement's going in favor of Luminosity right here. So they can try and extend their lead a little bit. And Boo Boo still with his Camo Rail. Four down there, actually. For yeah, LG. it's important also for him to use the entirety of the camo. You know, you want to try to use it for all 45 seconds, especially in Strongholds, to take advantage of predicting rotations and getting into good positions with it. Uh, especially while Boo Boo has, you know, the Railgun here. Pick off some easy kills. He's doing what he should be doing. You should be controlling calls and trying to push forward with your teammates for the proper rotations. And right now, LG is doing a good job of not giving up easy deaths when they could be. Well, he's not able to pick up any kills there with the Railgun, but he will have a teammate, Shotzi, pick up a kill there. That's going to be two down for LG, and Shotzi still hanging out here by this hallway. Gets the triple, looking for the over. He's going to just stay alive, though. A very smart play from a young player here. Sometimes you'll see some guys get a little oh. bit anxious and want to get that overkill and overextend, but not Shotzi. Shotzi stays alive and picks up a double kill, putting his team in a perfect position to try and get a stronghold here to get back in control. Yeah, but we also just saw Shotzi, I think, five or six kills, and LG is still getting time. They've had two strongholds this whole time. I'm not sure where the rotations or objective play are coming from from Splice. There must be just kind of split on where they're deciding to send their pushes off of spawn here. 
Right, you are. Victory X now with the railgun. He'll get taken down. Two down for LG. This is an opportunity for Splice potentially to get over to the nest. And there you'll see on the outlines, you do have a player over by the nest about to get that capture. Camo's up right into the hands of Ninja. So Ninja is looking to help out his teammate over by the nest. He'll finish the kill, but he is down to one shot and has got to be careful. Nades may be coming in, but look at this. Actually, no one nearby here to pick up this kill on Ninja. That is two or three camos in a row that LG has been contesting or getting right off the spawn. Boo Boo got the last one. But you saw as they knew camo was coming up, LG controlled the halls. They had control of the middle of the map. They kind of baited the nest stronghold that they had. Ninja retook it with camo. They still have this camo and now going for a triple cap. This is just great team play from Luminosity. Ninja now just staying alive as long as he can, letting his teammate finish off that capture there as he pushes up with the railgun. A great push indeed as well. Having the camo railgun is a deadly combo. Picks up the double, looking to get the triple. Yes, he does. Ninja making a move for basement now as three players are down on Splice. Luminosity looking like they are going to close this out here at any moment. Yeah, off spawn here. It looks like the other players from Luminosity, they need to be watching for this push to nest. All of these spawning players, they need to be, for Splice, focused on the same stronghold or they're going to end up losing this game. It looks like they're sending two players here rushing out towards this nest stronghold. It looks like they time. might be able to get it. No, they're not going to be able to do that. And Luminosity, there you see Ninja getting hyped right now, taking game number one. Well, who saw that coming, boys? Luminosity taking the objective, just as you predicted, Ryan. Uh, yeah, a lot of slaves coming out of the splice side. I mean, you see 21 and 11 out of Shotzi. That's not really a stat line you expect to see on the losing team. I want to give a massive shout out to L Town, actually, the man who contested that nest stronghold right at the death of the game. Knew the situation, read it perfectly. He contested the nest just long enough, made it impossible for Splice to get back into the game. Really well played by Luminosity. I think, Tao, you really kind of hit it right on the point there when you're saying it felt like Splice wasn't, they weren't, they weren't synced. They were kind of directing themselves in so many different ways and they weren't focusing on the same stronghold or they had people kind of going for uh, a flank and you had some two other guys making a push to the other side of the map. There was no synchronization and they kind of seemed split. At moments, we saw some greatness and a lot of teamwork, but other moments, it seemed like something just wasn't right. Well, the biggest takeaway for me was how the power-ups and power weapons were kind of played in advance of them spawning up, you know. Luminosity did a really good job for, I think, the last two of the last three uh, camos coming up to control the halls, kind of, you know, bait those areas and work together to get good angles and try to live with their camo. Obviously, Boo Boo got that one camo, but that was after both teams contested it fairly evenly. Luminosity managed to do much more with the power weapons and power ups when they did get them. Yeah, and we did see on the other side, though, we did see Shotzi take advantage of the railgun a little bit. But other than that, yeah, they weren't able to capitalize with getting all the camos and keeping them uh, on their side. But, yeah, Luminosity uh, feels like we're seeing the Luminosity that we saw at Vegas. Maybe even a little bit stronger and a little bit tougher. We saw them put up a great fight against Team Envious. Even though Splice beat Team Envious, maybe we're just seeing that Luminosity just bigger, stronger, better. Maybe H1Z1 is the secret. Secret to the powers, maybe, Ninja, maybe Ninja. that's the play right there. The Could ninjas <laughs> are, are going to be out in the chat full force, I, I'm sure. Amazing, but, but no, yeah, you're right. Uh, LG, that was a, a great game from them. I mean, like you said, they, they set up way better than Splice did for the, the power ups and the power weapons in game number one. Game two is on the way, a bit of a different one. This one, Truth Slayer. So, only the one power up on the map, the sword obviously on top middle as well. Probably more likely to see a Splice. Well, more of a better performance from Spice. Don't want to guarantee them a win here, but I'd say this one definitely favors them, considering their slaying performance in the last game. Without a doubt, Slayer on Truth. We've got the sword top middle. We've got camo, pink one. Got to put a lot of focus towards that sword. A lot of focus. A guy could come flying into a base and just completely eradicate two or three players. Let's kick things off with the new addition to Luminosity, Saiyan. He's only been on this team for one event. This is his second tournament competing with this roster. Saiyan spots the guy with camo, able to get some shots and pick up an assist, pick up a double assist there. So helping get a two for one trade. Yeah, enough cannot be said about Saiyan as a player. He deserves much more credit, I think. And has just performed extremely well on this roster since day one. 
Ninja's gonna go down there by Shooter. Shooter with some excellent shots. You've got Boo Boo Doo Boo pushing into pink two. You've got a player down below. Shooter pushing from that pink side. Two kills picked up here from Splice, but Falcate is gonna go down. Five to four, Splice leading the way. But as we all know, people always say, and it feels like Slayers don't actually start until about that 25 kill mark. Yeah, but this is big to note right here. All four players for their team are in blue base. They're going to have to decide which way they want to push. They can't be split on their pushes out here and give up any free deaths to allow LG to have numbers. Yeah, and I like the play call here. Go to Carbine because you can see on the right-hand side of your screen, Ninja with the sword. He's up on P3 right now, but if they were all to push out to pink, they would be a chopping board, essentially, for that sword. So nice play call here out of Splice, whether they know it or not. Yeah, very, very well played. You saw they sent two guys, one to bubble, one to car one, and then another car side the base to provide angles. Just a really good team executed push to regain control of the map as soon as they realized they had lost it. And look how spread art th out they are right now. You just had Shooter underneath the base. You have Boo Boo Doo Boo flying across the map down to bottom middle. He's able to get the help from Falcated at pink two. So great, a great spread from this squad. Moving from pink two to blue two to car two to red two to bottom middle, to blue one, just all over the map right now, making themselves very hard to predict where they're coming from and where they're at. So camouflage coming up in around the next 20 seconds. Watch for teams to fight around this pink two and pink one area in anticipation for the power-up. We're going to take a look at Falcated. It's the sword is up top middle. Would love to see him get his hands on that, but he's going to pick up the carbine. He does have a teammate here in the bubble. That's going to be Shotzi that falls down. No matter, Falcated is there with the Hell Mary to pick up the kill. Still holding on to the Carbine, 16 to 12 right now. That player is going to completely run away from that situation and get out of dodge right now. Over to Ninja as he's making his way over to Car. He's got his teammate there with the combo, Victory X. But look at this, looks like he is going to get singled out. Victory X goes down, but Falcated may get caught by himself right now. A little 1v1 here from Falcated and Ninja. He got some team help coming in over from the other side. Can Falcated do it? Yes, he is able to get some help. Two kills there for Splice. They are looking good right now, guys. Yeah, absolutely they are. And Falcated here, just, just making sure that he's blocking these bubble spawns, but also just making sure that his team at least have a tower, because you can see right there, Shooter is just about pushing across the map. But before that, uh, Splice didn't actually have a tower under their control. So really nice play from Falcated right there. He did go down, and now it's Shooter the man to try and get a tower for his team. LG elected to try and push this Carbine Tower. You can see it's there's training in Slays right now, but Shooter is locking down this Pink 2 area, which is important for when the camouflage comes up in around a minute's time. Yeah, and one of the biggest takeaways you can get from watching these players play on Truth Team Slayer right now is how they take advantage of the openings on the map. Now, when I say that, I mean when players on the other team go down, you have a 4-on-2, a 3-on-2, a 4-on-1. Players are going to fly around the map to block positions and force spawn to certain locations. Yeah, absolutely. Shooter here still in Pink 2. Again, the camouflage coming up in around the next 30 seconds. It was actually Boo Boo Doo Boo who picked it up from Slice. Splice, <laughs> Splice, excuse me, the first time round, excuse me, earlier on. Booby Dooby picked that one up, but LG did a good job shutting him down. But look at the scoreboard right now, guys. 27, make it 28 to 18. This next camouflage is going to be vital for Luminosity to try and close this margin a little bit. It's coming around the next 20 seconds. So, again, look for players to fight around this pink two, pink tower area. But it looks like Splice right now, they are rotating from the carbine side. So, nice rotations from them. They've realized they're around the other side of the map from the camouflage, and they're pushing through red right now, just slaying the LG boys, making sure they can't set up on the camouflage. Themselves. You want to know what's interesting as well? That sword has been sitting at top middle for quite some time as well. We see L-Town go down with that camo. Not going to be able to get any use out of that. Maybe Shooter might be able to get some sword action going on here. No, but he's going to keep on pushing. This pressure is not stopping. 36 to 21. Splice is showing no mercy right now. And Splice is playing this aggressive because they know they have the opportunity to do so when they have numbers for such an extended period of time. They've been catching LG on a split spawn cycle now for maybe six or seven sets of spawns in a row. And it's really difficult to work together with your teammates when you keep spawning up halfway to all the way across the map consistently. Look at this charge from Shotzi. Oh my god. Flying word. out. Victory X getting taken down. Shotzi charging across the map. That's a double. Looking to get this triple. Can he make it there in time? Yes, he does. Shotzi with the triple kill, showing some, showing a little bit of disrespect, disrespect right, right there, there as yeah. well. <laughs> this is 41 to 23. We may see a stake right here, Harry. We've seen a few already throughout the tournament. Shotzi still just making this push. He's got his teammate nearby as well. Just 
This young player, he shocks me all the time. The moves that he makes, the decisions that he makes, are such at a high level. And for him to not really be in the scene for too long, oh it's incredible to just see this Absolutely type of incredible. gameplay. With his from movement, you can tell running around with sword, Ooh. how he's gaining an opportunity to move slightly faster in different areas by taking the sword out oh and thrusting and sliding Still alive. areas. This guy just has no fear. It's crazy, man. This guy's been rotating around the map for so long. He was soaring off pink three, went down to blue two. He was a carbine a second ago, came back to pink. The movement from this man was absolute madness. Finally, he is shut down from the LG side, but 47 to 28 now. This game is pretty much over. Splice are tying up the series. Saying now, trying to get some needs up here, but at this point, you have to know that this is all but over. You know Splice is thinking just charge because we, you can't lose at this point. Falcated challenging back out, but Saiyan is going to take him down right there. Now 1v1 battle, 49 to 32 now. Just one kill remaining. Not going to be there. It will be on the other side of the map. Splice is still in this. They're tying up the series one to one. Incredible stuff from Splice. Absolutely shutting down LG in that game. We saw Shotzi's point of view for a lot of that game. But one thing I do want to highlight, looking at the scoreboard, check out the assists from the Splice Boys. 13, 12, 12, and 9. Shotzi, the only player with single-digit assists, but he did have those 18 kills, so I guess we can let him off. He had a suicide as well. I'm pretty sure he stuck a player and, and just rubbed his head against the, the plasma grenade. But really solid stuff there out of Splice. We said, uh, well, you said, Towie, before the series, that Luminosity definitely has the upper hand in the objective game modes. It's come true so far after losing game one, Splice coming back and winning game two. Yep, and the biggest takeaway for me that game, well, that triple kill was, was pretty good, but yeah. especially uh, a lot of times in Halo 5 with the speed that it's played and taking advantage of those, you know, open opportunities on the map, it's it's more about spawn control than it is map control. And on that game type in particular, Splice had complete spawn control for what we, whatever that run ended up being. You know, they went on a 25 plus run uh just What do you running do if the you're on the game. other side of that? If you're you, on have, the you have to try to slow it down, not give up your deaths, you know, every second you're buying your teammates that are spawning up on another side of the map, every second you're staying alive and buying time is another second they can get to you faster, another second, more opportunities for your team to get control again. Yeah, you want them to hunt you down underneath the base. You don't want to just poke out. Get it's just all about buying time. All you want to not give up your positioning. You know, it, there's a big difference between being on top of the base and looking for, you know, where they're pushing from versus not giving away your positioning and not engaging someone until they're all the way in the base to find you. And that, you know, difference in time usually leads to more opportunities for your teammates spawning up. So Going into CTF now, we saw how they played on Strongholds. We saw how both of them played on Slayer. Going into Capture the Flag, what, Harry, what do, you, what do you think to expect here from this? Well, something that's been really interesting as of late in terms of from the end of the fall season of Pro League throughout the world's qualification, we're seeing a lot more kind of elbow and, and trench runs with the flag on this map. I'm not really too sure why that is. It seems like teams almost kind of reactively run the flag depending on the situation, right, Tawi? Yeah, no, the reactive is, is definitely the best way to describe it, but teams have started to, you know, split the map vertically instead of horizontally. If you think about having control on snipe side versus, you know, red base versus blue base, the map is being split more often vertically versus controlling both rocket corners or controlling that half of the map versus snipe side of the map. And you have just a lot better angles rocket side than, you know, trying to help from cave to cave. Not that, you know, the whole map does revolve around snipe control, but based on positioning, you know, a rocket run is oftentimes preferable and teams have definitely adapted to that. And of course, Coliseum has the sniper and the rockets on this map. Power weapons so vital in Halo 5. Look for teams to try and control both of those. I'm going to be exciting, excited to see how Splice react to Luminosity setups. We saw in game number one on the rig, Luminosity were, were so fantastic at setting up for the camouflage and the railgun. They got constant control of those two. We'll see if it's the same here on Coliseum. Kicking things off with Victory X. This guy may not be the flashiest player. He may not pull off the sickest plays, but he will do whatever it takes to win the game. Victory X picking up a kill on Falcated. That's wow. three down for Splice, about to be four. We may see a quick flag move here. Ninja's going to be getting some sight lines here on these spawns. Over by the elbow, picks up a kill. That flag is moving. I believe that's Victory X moving that flag. Ninja misses a rocket. 
narrowly misses Victory X at the same time, misses another rocket. He's gonna go down, but look at this. I believe L Town is gonna get flag cap number one. And look at that teamwork. Look at one, two, three, four, all four down, and they capitalize on that and get that flag all the way back to their base. Yeah, but it's a, a really poor job that the one player who thrust it away from the rocket behind him and made Ninja waste another rocket after it was an unbelievable play that cost LG both weapons and complete control because his teammates had to try to fight off a two-on-two -two with poor positioning and rockets down on the other half of the map. That does so much for Splice regaining control of this game. Now we've got Splice running the flag. Victory X trying to counter on the other side to buy some oh. time. He's able to do so. Takes the eyes of two players. They're able to take down one of them. That other player is going to be Shotzi. Taken. He'll go down. Saiyan now with the sniper rifle. Ninja keeping the flag alive. Ninja goes down as well. Now over to Boo Boo Doo Boo as he's got the flag just waiting for his teammates to return. And he's watching the elbow knowing a player could come around the corner. L-Town comes around that corner as one shot. But look at this. Boo Boo Doo Boo just staying alive. He gets the help from his teammate. Shots, he finishes him off. Two young guns working together. Great teamwork. And for that exact reason that we just saw right there is why I do not like the overextend to try to stop a flag pull or try to get a return in a, in a standoff situation. Situation. L Town would have been much Ooh. better off going low to try to help his teammates contest the flag they already have out have instead of trying to solo over to the base where Boo Boo was clearly baiting the elbow for that kill. And now with the sniper and the flag, you gotta love seeing this from a player as well. Not the having flag. the care of just only going for sniper kills. He picks up that sniper, he gets a headshot, he moves the flag, he is doing it all right now, but he needs his team oh. to get in there and get the return. L Town gets the kill. I believe there is one more player there but they've got to push together. L-Town, he misses it, but he gets it. Falcate is down, double kill. Can they get the return? Saiyan's waiting, that ninja's waiting now back at the base. They get the cap, they're up two to zero. What a series of events. I was gonna say, they have to try to push together at the same time for the series of spawns here, but once you see that flag is down halfway on the return timer, you can go for it solo. You can manage to get that usually without dying, and L-Town manages the return. That was an unbelievable team play from LG to secure that return. We need to see the boys in Splice here pick things up, though. They're getting that flag moving. There's two down on LG, but two down on Splice. Make that three down on Splice. Can he get a touch? Falcated is able to. He gets that flag down. Are they able to finish the kill? They are. L-Town goes down. That flag is still alive. They've got a touch, but Sane is flying in. Shoulder bash after shoulder bash coming in here to take down Sane. And Shotzi has got this flag all the way back, fighting for their lives to get this flag back in their base. Towie, what did you see there? Tell me a little bit about that flag. That was an unbelievable relay, but LG seems to kind of one at a time, desperate for it instead of getting into good position. Oh! Unbelievable no scope coming out of Victory X. Love to see that out of him. So we were just, I just, I gotta put my words back into my mouth. Yeah. I said he wasn't a flashy player. He hurt Frank, you. He is a flashy player. I, I, I trust you, Cam. I know you're a flashy player. I'm sorry. One thing I do want to say, though, about Victory X's play, he kind of identified, he had the sniper at top catwalk. He identified the flag had gone. A lot of, like, non-veteran players like to try and overextend, try and be a hero. He realized, hey, if I give the sniper to the other team, we know the type of shots they can hit, so we don't want to give this weapon to them. Shotzi now from Splice running this flag. I kind of like Luminosity coming back to their base. They have a couple of overextenders here, Towie. It might be able to... I do believe it's Victory X here, who is going to be the main man. Shooter picking up a double. Can he make it? Three with a ground pound! Can't quite connect with it, but Victory X is still behind this Splice team with the Rockets. That and flag is going to be capped as well on the other side. So what a series of plays. They held down that spawn. They blocked off that that flank route towards the elbow on their side. We're all tied up two to two. Towie, what are you seeing here? And the takeaway is Shooter has not left Snipe. He has not had to worry about pressure coming at him from any unexpected angles as LG is trying to push off their spawns. It was very confusing why they sent one or two back slowly after the pull already got to Snipe, and then they were split on trying to go through Snipe or to overextend the rockets. They're very split on what they want to do objectively, and that's why it's two to two right now. Well, it looks like LG is just priming up for a push right here into the base. They've got players all around, but look at this. You've got Splice members behind them at their base. Victory X trying to stay alive, almost pulls off the impossible. Shotzi's going to take him down. Ninja gets this flag moving on the other end, but their flag's away. Boo Boo Doo Boo's got this flag all the way back. There was two members down from LG. If they can get this return, this could be lights out, and Splice will go up 2-1 in the They're series. They're going to double hop that return. It's going to go by. And they they get it. Splice is able to come back 
Ooh. Boo Boo Doo Boo throwing up the choke sign. That's the first I would have never guessed. Boo Boo Doo Boo would be throwing up the choke sign there. Luminosity seeming a little bit upset on that side, but all smiles here from the guys on Splice. Let's take a look at these stats. Yeah. Positive 10. That's a plus 10 spread from wow. Shotzi. We saw his point of view for a lot, a lot of the game. He was doing great work. Like you said, Shooter not leaving the sniper side. He was really corralling that area of the map for his team. 15 and 8 out of him. I just want to check out the power weapon kills. Actually, Luminosity, funnily enough, with one extra power weapon kill in comparison to Splice. So Splice, despite not having the, the majority of the power weapon control, they came out good in Colosseum Capture the Flag. And I yep. think for me, the biggest takeaway, again, came down to spawn control on that game. And you saw once Splice was able to get the spawns predictably where they wanted them, they kind of ran away with the game again. You know, it, it just looked like it was just a different level of coordination amongst all four players. Once we saw two players at snipe, they're pushing in for flag, running it right back through to snipe. They ran two flags through snipe in a matter of two minutes, predicting where spawns were going to be. And on the other side for LG, confusion on where they wanted to push out there. And we saw players pushing at different times. Their timing was off, especially for the return. They had the flag out but didn't watch it. And just better teamwork, really, overall for Splice. Without a doubt. Well, guys, if you're just tuning in, it is two to one. We've got Splice leading right now, but we are playing a best of seven. We are in bracket play. Group play is completely finished. So two to one, it's the first team to four wins. Can I just say how cool it is to have best of five groups and then best of seven bracket play. I can remember the days of best of threes and tournaments. So, so cool to see the Halo WC adopting the best of five into best of sevens. I also, think it's, it's so good. Very, very cool to see double elimination, yeah. I must say. Especially 100%. as such a big tournament. Double elimination is just, it's, it's a better way to go, in my opinion. 100% agreed. We're going to be seeing some epic games Check out Fear Itself, the coach of Luminosity there. He is he is ready to go. Wait, oh, he, hi, that's hi. a stone cold look right Hold there. Hold up. I just read the ticker. It says follow the talent. Where's my freaking handle right there? At Wonderboy Halo, by the way. Just throwing <laughs> that out there. It's, it's not on there. Why what am I not talent? Come on, guys. You didn't get that memo. Come on, man. Wait, you just you just gave yourself a call out. I think it's yeah, good. At Wonderboy Halo. We'll get it one more. Well, right, Wonder we're gonna Boy make Halo. a sign to hold up. <laughs> I'm gonna do it for the finals. I'm gonna Before this game the crowd. <laughs> So going uh, into this next game, though, I mean, Splice obviously being up 2-1. to one. Let's take a look at the series layout here one more time. We're going into Eden Strongholds. We saw what Luminosity did to them on Strongholds, the rig. Obviously having more, uh, more communication and being more in sync. Are we going to be able to see Splice kind of adapt to that? Are they going to be able to, uh, to adapt to that on Eden? Maybe the rig is just a bad game type for them. Eden Stronghold is a very good game type for Splice. I can't speak uh, technically for LG. I think it's one of their better game types, certainly. But our team had to play Splice and Eden Stronghold's last two tournaments, LCQ and at Vegas, and they played it extraordinarily well both times. Yeah, one thing is worth noting, Red Team definitely has the advantage on the first overshield here on Eden Stronghold. You can see Shotzi right there from Splice trying to make a play on that one. He actually gets it fully as well. So wouldn't be surprised to see a big turbine fight right here for them to try and take down Shotzi, melt his overshield a little bit, as well as fighting for this rocket launcher, but it looks like it's going to be Boo Boo Doo Boo to pick up that one. He can stay alive with his rockets. This will be vital! Oh my Boo -boo word! Boo Boo giving the Doo Boo right there. Guys, if you're in the Twitch chat, let's get some hype here. Boo Boo, Boo, -boo take my Doo Boo. Take my Doo Boo. Let's get that out there. Boo Boo with the long range from downtown rocket. Absolutely insane. Still has three rockets in the chamber. Over on the other side, the other young gun, the youngest gun in Halo 5 right now, Shotzi just pulling off some plays over here, trying to get some control here at the top catwalk. Playing a little bit cautious, but as he should, as there's players all around. I was about to say, off the start, we saw three dead in the kill feed for LG. I thought that was extremely well played by Splice to not give up any unnecessary deaths, trying to push into spawns too fast. But somehow they just managed to go three down while they had tower control. It's very confusing how they could overextend from those positions and give up deaths when they have better positioning on the map. Right you are, and now we're going to see LG actually be in control after a rough start for them. So Splice definitely not capitalizing, like you said, Towie, here at the start of the game. So Victory X is going to hang back here and block this tower area. And now up to make a flank. Let's see if he's going to be able to spot any players. Spots a guy on his radar up above. Whips out the Brute Plasma Rifle. He's going to get some shots here on Boo Boo Jubu. Switch over to the BR. Finishes him off. Nice little play there. 
to take down Boo Boo Doo Boo. He's making his way over towards the blue bend, and that's going to be three down for Splice. Yeah, three down for Splice, and at a vital moment here for Luminosity as well, because the rocket launcher coming up in 10 seconds. Immediately after that, the overshield spawning in the pit, as well as the camouflage at the tower. Okay, but also right now, that's a triple cap for LG. Splice isn't playing this like it's a stronghold skin. They had tower control, and the only stronghold they had, blue bend, they were drifting away from and just gave up deaths to. This is still a triple cap for LG. This is very poorly paid, played by Splice. And Splice does have the Rockets once again. Overshield coming up. They are able to make that player burn that OS. Two down for LG. This is where they need to act. They take down the Camo player as well. L-Town is down as well. They are able to get Blue Ben. They got to get Catwalk though. Boo Boo Doo Boo is bottom middle with Rockets. Just trying to push up incredibly fast. He's able to get that. Picks up the kill in the window. He's got a player here right above him as well. Able to pick up that kill. This is a phenomenal push. You've got Splice putting some points on the board and one rocket left. Finally the on the board, I hit back during that sequence of events just to see the kills. I, Splice has to be leading in kills by a considerable margin at this point, and they're down 40 to 6. It just goes to show how important it is to have efficient objective play like Luminosity has for most of this game. Yeah, definitely not enough focus coming from Splice on these objectives. They are, are slain machines, but no one putting enough focus towards that objective. We're seeing a little bit more focus now, though. They've kind of woken themselves up, but is it going to be a little bit too late right now? That is a huge reset. Victory X keeping control here over by the tower. You see the player outlines of Splice all spawning by red making their way around over towards Blue Bend, opting to leave this catwalk side. But one player does want to get this catwalk. That's Falcated. He's going to get pegged down to one shot, finished off by Saiyan. But on the other side, they're able to pick up that Blue Bend and get some control here, holding two more strongholds. But they haven't really been able to hold two strongholds for quite that long. Yeah, worth noting that the rocket launcher coming up in 20 seconds, don't forget it was Boo Boo Doo Boo who picked up that last time round. It was actually Luminosity who got both of the power-ups last time, so they're going to know the timing on both of those, but don't forget Boo Boo also killed the Overshield player as he was picking it up. So both teams going to know a timing on the Overshield. However, L-Town getting burnt with the camouflage means Luminosity will only That is know. such a big individual win for Saiyan, putting LG over into another triple cap, stopping the Red Nest take off of their spawns. These power-ups are going to be crucial. LG still in control of this game, even though they haven't had the slaves. All right, we're going to see Sane with the Rockets make a run for Overshield. He's going to have to burn those. Boo Boo Doo Boo with the double kill. A lot more slaves and multi-kills happening, but Splice not able to do anything. That player is wow. going to go down, and Boo Boo Doo Boo is still alive. This man does not want to die. He wants to live. Falcated with camo as well, so they do have some goodies. Let's see how long. I mean, they need to play this right here. They need to pick up the first few kills. Can he at least get that trade? Yes, okay, he got the trade. That was a crucial trade and super important I've, to get. I've got to ask, Howie, why do you think it is that Splice are getting so many kills and not converting them into objective points? Would you say they're just getting kill hungry or is their positioning off a little bit? Their positioning is off. They are not forcing the spawns the way that they should be. And they're not putting enough emphasis on taking advantage of open areas on the map to get into the strongholds when they have the opportunity to do so. They're focusing too much on getting to a position to force a spawn and then apply pressure to those spawns instead of getting into the strongholds when the time is open. Some great grenades there by Boo Boo Doo Boo though to get Ninja to one shot, although he will stay alive. We've got Ninja now trying to get some control here on the nest. Nades coming in from all over the place, but he is gonna be able to just slip out once again and stay alive. Two down for Splice, not looking good here. We're at 73 to 30, not looking good at all for Splice as Near Luminosity just keeps pulling away to near the end of this game. And this is a great play from Ninja here. They, they have tower control. They see one player solo spawn up at tower, and they know they need to keep tower control. One for Catwalk, but two for Red Nest. And this is just great team play and positioning from LG. Yeah, this next set of rockets and power-ups is absolutely vital, in my opinion, for Splice's hope in this game. The rockets coming up now. You can see Ninja with an amazing turbine flank right here. He's actually out of ammo, but if he can corral these rockets, it could be all she wrote here for Splice because there's not that much time left in the game. If Luminosity are able to grab an overshield and, and push a triple cap, this could well be game with the long-range rocket, the total control as well for Luminosity. All they need is the overshield, which is coming up around this moment. Another kill there from Ninja. And 
and the overshield. He gets away with it. That's got to be game. Surely a double from Ninja. Oh, big plays from the man. Oh, Look the at the efficiency. That's crazy. The efficiency oh. of that rocket usage right there. Ninja That's just really game. putting it to work right now. Just absolutely incredible plays. And this great is such prediction. a very, very smart play here. They have to desperate for a strong ult. He knows that. It's a four-man push to Catwalk, but he is baiting their push from outside towards red anyways. That's just great plays. Yeah, great prediction, Rockets, as well. Just shooting that Rocket, he knows they're going to be making a move for the top catwalk. And just fires one up there just for just for, just for fun. Just for right? fun. Yeah. And you know what? He ends up hitting it. So we're all tied up now, 2-2 two to two in the series. Looking at LG, looking quite confident. Let's take a look at the stat line. Fairly even here on the guys from LG. 10, 11, 11, and 11. Boo Boo Doo Boo on the other side. 15, 9, 10, and 7 from the boys on Splice. A decent amount of assists coming in from both sides. Taking a look at the power weapon kills. Boo Boo Doo Boo with eight power weapon kills. I want to say almost all of those were towards the beginning of that game when they had a lot of control with the Rockets, but they weren't able to get that much control. But how does that happen, though? How do you have one player with eight power weapon kills and, and, and not even break more than 50 points, not more than 40 points? I mean, that's that's pretty crazy. I mean, <laughs> Boo Boo Doo Boo alone doubled the Luminosity's power weapon kills. And, and like you were saying, Tawi, early on in that game, Splice had so many kills, but just weren't converting them into Stronghold's points. And you absolutely can't do that on Stronghold's. No, it, it comes from having a focus of making sure you're making the proper rotations or at least getting into the Stronghold's when the other team has the advantage in Strongholds when you have your kills. You know, you, 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 they, they had a reverse order of operations. It seemed like they were trying to push into areas of the map to control before retaking the Stronghold's in between slays while the timing was open, and it was just really split on what they wanted to do even though they were getting the kills. Quite insane, quite insane. I believe we just got word uh, from our producer that the score is three to two on the other stream oh. in favor of Team Envious, and they are playing wow. against Team Liquid. Don't go there though, stay here. So we'll, we'll get 100, um, yes, confirmation, oh, three streams. to two. Team, team Envious is three to two, so. Who'd have thought? We've seen that matchup happen quite a few times. Team Liquid and Team Envious happen in these last couple tournaments where Optic Gaming didn't even have to play against Team Envious. And you've heard Lethal say, he's like, yeah, we'll let Liquid do the work for us. We'll <laughs> let them do the work. But now we're seeing Team Envious. Classic, TJ. Technically Team speaking, come in here to take him out. this game is closer than the one on the other stream, so you should stay here. This one's tied up, right? Also, I'm here. Two. Yeah, exactly, right? It's not every day you get Tawi in the booth, so stay here. Don't don't go into the other stream. In fact, why not both? Just have yeah. the audio turn on, for this turn one. Turn on multi 4K, no los dos. Turn on two monitors. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> why not two? Bless you. Why not both? Yeah, oh, why okay. not both? <laughs> hey, I'm learning. Let's <laughs> <Can't> go. <laughs> Come to California, learn some words. Great. First time in Love America. Words. No lots of words. Yep. A lot I'm, of first times here. I know a few Sorry. words. I know. I had in and out for the first time the other day. That was An good. experience. That was great. <laughs> I loved it. Although I'm ill now. I don't know if that's kind of the same. Is there, is there a correlation there? I'm not really too sure. Possibly. Right. <laughs> well, let's take a look at the I'll Dragon give you a series. Thank you. Back to the series at hand here. <laughs> We've got two to two. Splice versus Luminosity Gaming. Obviously, there's a bit more coordination when you look at game number one and game number four, those stat lines for Strongholds. But we saw what happened on Slayer. Let's see if Splice is going to be able to reiterate what they just did on Slayer moments ago, but on Plaza. They're going to have to get control of that sniper along with this overshield, but Victory X has got his eyes here on the OS. Nades come flying in, make Victory X back down, and I believe that OS is going to be burned, and that sniper is still just going to hang out up there. Victory X now pushing across top middle. A player does sneak behind him, gets him down to one shot, and who is it? It is Shotzi. Not surprised that is Shotzi. What a heads up play. He knows he has the opening to get to the middle of the map to make a crouch play there, just abusing the fact that we have radar in this game right now, and takes advantage of a free kill in the middle of the map. Shotzi, just this new young player, just using everything to his advantage. But it doesn't matter because Ninja was able to get that sniper rifle, and he's going to get a shot. Not going to be able to connect that, though, so that sniper is going to fall down by the garbage truck. I believe that's going to be Victory X now. We just saw him pull off a ridiculous flashy play on Coliseum. Let's see if he's going to be able to do anything here as he's making his way up to the top lift. 
a classic spot. We see a lot of players oh. hang out. Shotzi, <laughs> sit down. Not today. You're not pushing over here to top left. This is my territory. There's Victory life access. in the old man yet. Yeah, what a shot. Was that a stabilizer? I don't even know. That was absolutely crazy from the old man. That was one swift move from Victory X right there. He's just, you know what? Let's just keep throwing in some no scopes. He hits a body shot, but that sniper's going to go down. And I believe that goes into the hands of Shooter. But we'll check in with Shooter here in the cafe. He's going to catch a player spawning off into the yard. Gets another player, but he'll only hit the body shot. Definitely an opportunity where you really want to make sure you're hitting those headshots as those players come flying across the screen. I was about to say, too, this OS is coming up here in about 20 or 30 seconds, and we see Shotzi just taking down at glass. I'm not sure if I agree with Shooter's play. He wants to back up here so that they can get angles to stop them from pushing out, but they need to apply it. pressure from a few different angles. Speaking of the overshield, it was actually Ninja from Luminosity who burnt the first one. So they're going to know in exact timing on that. Looks like Splice have set up around this poster's kind of area. And it looks like we have Saiyan over there in blue. But Boo Doob is pressuring him early. So it looks like Splice actually in a favorable position to grab this overshield. All right, well, let's jump into a listen in and hear what the communication like oh. is like on Splice. But that overshield is going to go down. Let's jump into a listen in with Splice. All right, there you heard it from Splice. Not too chaotic, but definitely uh, trying to get some coordination going. Let's jump over to LG and see what Sane's doing, though, as he's got the sniper rifle. As he's over here in the cafe, he's got eight shots left. They've got a 25 to 20 kill lead, and OS is coming up. So Sane is in a prime spot to make sure he gets some nice sight lines on any players from Slice making their move for this overshield. Does spot a player by posters. Not going to be able to connect, though. Does get a flank here over by the Flowers. Does have a teammate there. And look at this. OS is up. He hits the no-scope, but is only able to hit the body shot. Going for the sticky, going for the body. Not able to get any kills, though, with that sniper in. Yeah, absolutely not. It's once again, though, Splice with the overshield. Shooter also has the sniper here on the Splice side, which is good for them, right? They're down by two right now. If they can collapse on some of these yard spawns, you can see Ninja just trying to jiggle peek right here. He actually gets Spartan charged. They can get a few more kills right here. They're going to be in the lead and in control of this game. Yeah, and we once again see how important that loop side is for OS. Splice able to control that this time around and make sure they got the full, even though it was being contested by the sniper in Cafe. Splice has brought themselves back into this. We are all tied up, folks. 27 to 27. Shooter with the sniper rifle trying to stay alive. Hits oh. the body shot. Hits the headshot. One and one. You're done. He's out. Two down for LG. 29 to 28. Spawns up a teammate here in Cafe. You've got Overshield coming up in about a minute as well. So LG is now, look at this. This game has slowed down quite a bit right now. <laughs> LG just got the worst spawns you can get in this game type. All spawning up at snipe. They have very poor angles or areas that they can try to push to. And Splice, I thought they might split out to, to loop there. Splice didn't really rotate out fast enough to try to force those spawns to snipe. You want to be there for this new sniper coming up in 20 seconds, but 
they got to still try to push out or they're going to keep spawning there. One thing I want to highlight, look at all the splice players on the left-hand side of your screen, all having rifles. Upgrading their weaponry is something they've done very well throughout this series. Obviously, two of the players did just go down, so now they're down to just the two rifles. But really nice stuff out of them upgrading their weaponry and the overshield coming up soon as well. It's going to be an important battle around the blue side and the loop side, as you said earlier on, Towie. Whichever team could control those two areas is going to have the best shot at look getting the at next overshield. Push. Look at this push. Two down, that was a three down for just a second. And a sniper comes up, and now you see Boo Boo Doo Boo with that sniper. So they made that timely push at the perfect moment. 34 to 31. Overshield coming up. That's one down for both members of each team. Boo Boo Doo Boo taking off L Town's face, making sure no player is going to be sneaking out from Yellow Sneaky again. Boo Boo Doo Boo now trying to clear out the area here over by the loop. Valcated. He keeps his overshield, and they're able to pick up a couple more kills as well. But. Let's see if Boo Boo Doo Boo is able to do too much more with his sniper rifle after Falcated picks up another kill. Boo Boo Doo Boo still, he's got his eyes on the sneaky. Spots a player that's down to one shot, not able to get a connection here. All the guys here from Luminosity are stuck in the ca cafe. And honestly, I think this is another position where you do not want to be stuck. Being stuck in cafe is a little bit better than still being stuck at snipe. You can, you know, work with your teammates, you have angles, you have escape routes. It's a lot harder to finish kills from a distance, but still not an ideal spot for them to be. They really need to make a team push to get out. And it looks like they're doing just that into the yard, but look at this. Splice is just answering back. Two on two right now. They're able to get the trades and make a decent trade here, a two to one trade from those players pushing into the yard. And look at this, Boo Boo Doo Boo. He is making sure that they're not gonna make this push to yard again. Got his eyes here, right on this push. Misses the headshot. Not normal of Boo Boo Doo Boo when he is sniping, but these guys have a nine kill lead right now. Towie, what's going on right now? What is Luminosity, what do they need to do to bring themselves back? They really need to just try to get out to a better position on the map. We saw one player trying to get out there, but the pressure is all on them from where they're trying to go. And they're really just playing predictably into what Splice is baiting them into and there's not much you can do. You gotta really have a good coordinated team push here to regain control of loop and yard, and it's gotta be three guys at least at once with a flanker coming in after, or all four at once just to try to regain some better positioning. You can't keep spawning in cafe over and over as the other team fades you. Yeah, Luminosity has been stuck in cafe, I wanna say for a good two minutes, and now finally Boo Boo Doo Boo and Splice has, have pushed out from the yard to let the guys on LG push in there, but yeah, LG, they are still spawning. Look at this, you're seeing them spawn up here right over in Cafe. One player does spawn by down by Hotel, but we're at 48, 36. It's a little too late right now to really try anything. They're trying another three-man push, but that is gonna be it. Once again, Splice showing why they are so good at slaying. These young guys are such good, talented players individually, 1v1, just their shot is always on point. And Harry, you said it very, you honestly said it perfectly. All of these guys, they're picking up all the BRs. They're picking up the light rifles. They're picking up all those mid-tier weapons. Yeah, they are, but uh, you, you were touching upon the individual skill. I want to give a shout out to their team coordination. As, as, as Tawi was saying in the cast, they were constantly trapped within Blue and Cafe. I mean, you could see like the way they were manipulating the spawns was absolutely perfect. You know, they were, like Tawi said, they were baiting uh, excuse me, they were baiting Luminosity exactly into what they wanted them to do and be stuck around that kind of blue area and then just suffocated them from there. When you're stuck in that kind of blue scenario on Plaza, you have to make a choice. Do you, do you just push out to Snipe, which is a death trap, or do you try and push into Yard, which is exactly what Splice wants you to do? And, and while they were stuck in blue and, and Yard, they could not get a handle on the power-up. They couldn't get a handle on the Snipe rifle either. And, and as a result, Splice take that Slayer. Yet another Slayer win here for Splice. The biggest takeaway for me was pretty similar to what we saw in the other games that Splice won. When they managed to get control of the map enough to influence spawns how they want, they kind of run away with the game. And they proved that again. Yeah, and they, they have what it takes to hold it down. I, I know a lot of people have questioned this young team. One, because they're young, and they don't have really a player who has been around for a long time to kind of keep them grounded. Uh, they... Their coach, Coach Phil, tries his best to keep them grounded, to keep them together. And I think, honestly, Coach Phil does a great job on that squad to, to be, that, be that voice of, of reason for that team and kind of be that backbone for this squad. Uh, when you have all these young players and this raw talent, sometimes you can let it, it, that talent can get to your head. But there's been so many plays that we've seen, especially from Shotzi, where we could have seen him jump out to go for a, a wild snipe 
play or jump out to go for a wild reversal, but he contains that and he is able to stay composed and not try to go for anything too flashy. Yeah, he's reeling himself in a little bit, which is what you kind of see from the more experienced players, which is a very encouraging sign for, for Splice. Coming up next is going to be Capsule Flag on Truth. And don't forget, we saw Truth Slayer earlier. It was, what was it, 50 to 24 or something in favor of Splice. They went on that absolutely crazy run. Obviously a different game type, more objective-based. And, and as we've seen so far in this series, that Luminosity very efficient in their objective prowess. But you got to say, Splice are going to be confident after just taking the last game, as well as taking the previous Truth game in this series. Now, I, I don't believe I'm wrong, okay. but I'm fairly confident in saying that this is one of uh, Luminosity's better game types. Okay. Um, these teams have also scrammed online uh, pretty consistently. At least recently, they've been playing each other a lot. And like I, like I mentioned earlier, and like you just said, LG has been just considerably more objective efficient. Um, they were up 2-0 to zero in that Coliseum game before Splice finally got complete control and kind of ran away with the game. Now... Obviously, Truth is still Truth, but it is very different than we just saw on Truth Slayer. And I, I honestly, I think I'd give the edge to Luminosity, but it's going to be real close for sure. Yeah, it's tough to tell. I mean, I feel like these te two teams really match up quite well. Um, we we saw Splice take down LG in the capture of the flag for Coliseum. Uh, Truth can be a very quick game. We've seen games end in like two and a half, three minutes. So if you just get on that bad rotation where you're just not able to really do too much or your teammates just, like you said, you're not staying alive, you're not buying enough time for them to spawn up, uh, it could just waterfall. Let's take a look at the, the series layout, though, and check out the last scores uh, that we've seen throughout the series uh, here. We saw Luminosity take game number one, game two and three from Splice. Game four, Luminosity, and game Number five, Splice. Splice just need to win here to send themselves forward to winners round two. Luminosity, they've got to take this one to game number seven. But we're here at the Halo World Championship 2017 Finals. From what I understand, on the mainstream, it's a game seven oh, between man. Liquid and Envy. Definitely but turn on both streams. don't go over there. I You've got to stay here because Taui says we're going to a game seven. And it actually, well. I'm, I'm getting I'm told by the producer right now that the game is tied 25 to 25 oh over my, there. Yeah, but don't go there, though. you got to stay here, OK? I will this offer is a good no series, advice. <laughs> Life is Tau will not influence anybody but me. Oh, my gosh. All right, well, to the series at hand right now, we are going into game number six. Splice first Luminosity. Splice looking to close this out. Luminosity looking to send this to game number seven. Victory X making some quick moves into the base. Two down for Splice. Victory's going to go down. Look at this. Three down. Ninja already making a flag move. Towie, what are you seeing right and now? And that is a great play call out of whoever made that play call on LG. You saw Victory kind of unassured, but flying out as soon as he saw they got two dead because Ninja was flying from the other side. They knew they were going to get that flag pull the second they saw two dead, and they get a cap on the board in the first 30 seconds of the game. Incredible plays here from Luminosity. Definitely showing that they want to send this to game number seven. Helltown's going down. Victory X with the sword trying to stay alive and get another flag touch not going to be able to do so falcated there to deny him of that falcated waiting for players to push out over by this pink side he's going to get peeked out from blue one and get taken down splice now trying to get some control over by pink two boo boo doo boo pushing down to pink one getting some shots across the map and look at this you've got shotzi behind the guys on lg Got another kill picked up, but Boo Boo Doo Boo's got the sword. The last thing you want anyone on the other team to have is the sword and the flag. He's already back in T minus less than five seconds. Caps, flag number one for Splice. We are all tied up one to one. Boo Boo Doo Boo now pushing over to pink side. He's got Shotzi over there as well. Shotzi goes down. Now getting shots over to buy pink too, but a lot of more teamwork here coming from Splice. But look at this. You're going to see LG start to collapse on these players. That's going to be two down for Splice. That is a huge, huge kill out of Ninja there. They definitely are going to try to run this flag fast. I think the flag runner here is the only player on that half of the map trying to get it back as fast as possible. Ninja opting to go for the sword under the base, trying to contain Splice all the way to Carside. Looks like they end up getting the return. I'm not sure where that flag pull ended up going out to, but you have to think maybe off of spawn, that was a bit of a misplay for the players on Splice. Ninja 
taken down in the base, getting that reef for a 2 to 1 lead, though. Definitely. Victory X now pushing right back up. Had L Town by his side, but he's going to go down along with L Town. And now we're going to see if Splice can maybe get a push back past that 50 yard mark. They had a great push with Shotzi sneaking into the base and getting that flag moving and rallying that right to Boo Boo with the sword. Another move like that could just bring them right back into the game. Falcated now, I believe, waiting for that camo, unless a player has already picked up this camo. But look at this. That flag is already back towards the pink side. Got to focus on some slays here, and that's exactly what they're doing. Falcated, not really going for the flag because he knows he's just going to get lit up. So he takes down L-Town. That flag's still alive. Can he get Big. the touch? Not oh. able to, but you know who does get that touch. That's going to be Boo Boo Doo Boo. They are just rallying this flag all the way back. It's under the base, but I think Ninja is going to be able to stop that one, and he will finally. Unbelievable return, return from flag. Ninja. As soon as L Town was the player who went for that return originally, they didn't have the kills or positioning to be able to help him with a solo return there. He probably should have just tried to get some kills or try to get up top center. Yeah, I actually really like the play from Elton though, because he forced the hand of Splice. He said, hey, listen, we're not going to give you time on this to get Slays. We know you're a better Slayer team than us. We're just going to force your hand. And as a result, they got the return. Really clutch play there from Elton and Ninja combining to get the return right there. All right, Ninja now getting some nades into pink two. We've got players pushing up from Splice here. Over by the pink side, a three-man push and a player top middle trying to get into the base. You've got Shotzi underneath the base, blue one. You've got Falcated putting on shots on two players. That's going to be two down. Shotzi's going to go down, though. Look at this. Do got a player from LG, and that's going to be saying with the sword, I believe. So he's just playing this slow, waiting for a player to push up on him, jumping up. And now Falcated is going to sneak away there, staying alive. Can he pick up that kill? Not going to be. Oh, somebody disrespect there. And folks, we did just get. Notice in Liquid did win game number seven. Wow. Moving on, Team Envious will fall to the loser's bracket. But look at this, back to this game. Shotzi running the flag with the sword. We are seeing so many times where Splice is just really taking advantage of using that sword and flag run. Yeah, great play out of L-Town here, honestly. You know, it's, it's tough to say without knowing the positioning of the rest of his team. He kind of went into that base alone, trying to get the flag pulled just to stop the cap happening right away. It's really important how Ninja plays this camo, whether or not they're able to take control. As two fall down, though, for Splice, as the only two players up are both car side, Ninja should try to get this pull as fast as possible as he does. Ninja trying to give some cover, still has camo. This could be it. That flag is all the way by pink one. Ninja almost going extremely clutch, clutch to pick up that kill, but victory on the other side. That's he it. That's does game. Have that the flag. We're dead. Nobody's there to do anything, oh. and we are going to a second game seven here at the Halo World Championship 2017 Finals. What more can you expect? I mean, this these are the best and greatest Halo teams in the world, and we are seeing exactly why these guys are here. Two game sevens from our first two winners bracket heats. That is crazy. Nothing really screams out to me on this scoreboard right now. I mean, a negative five out of Boo Boo, not the kind of performance you'd expect out of him, but he was doing a lot of objective work and, and controlling Pink 2 a lot of the game as well. But wow, you call it, Sal. It's, we're going to a game seven. The biggest takeaway for me in that game that you can notice is how fast LG were to take advantage of opportunities at the second they saw them. And they did that as a team. They were very unified in making pushes and flying into the base, whether it's for a flagpole, a distraction, or for making flag runs. Yeah, definitely a bit more composed and yeah, realizing those openings, I think uh, definitely is the best way to put it. I think what kept Splice in it is just really using that sword to rally that flag back in I mean, T-minus less than seven seconds. I'm going to have to seconds. check the math on it again. I think it's somewhere between five to 600% faster. <laughs> so not sure if it's the most balanced weapon for a flag game, but, you know, it is, it is Splice. quite useful to have. Splice definitely taking advantage of it. So game number seven. Game number seven. Here we go. I'm going to start with you, Harry. Harry Don't put me on the spot, dude. Predictions. What do you think here? What? After the Slayers we've seen so far in this series, I have to give it to Splice. 
Um, you can see right there, I mean, you see Truth Slayer, they've already won that one. They won Plaza Slayer as well. Going into Regret, obviously a lot of it does revolve around that overshield control. And we've seen previously in this series, Luminosity very good setting up around the power-ups and power weapons. But I gotta say, man, Splice have impressed me so far. Very, kind of a similar game type to Truth in the fact it is an arena-style map. But at the same time, it's 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 a funny one, man. I I just have a feeling Splice is going to take this one. It could be close, but it could be a blowout. I've basically said absolutely nothing right there. <laughs> but <laughs> who do you my, think is going to win? I think Splice. Splice, Tally. What well, are your predictions here? For those of you who don't know, I. Uh I'm a former roommate of both Victory X and Fear Itself for two years. So, with that being said, I'm going to have to go with Luminosity wow. for all the all the technical <laughs> and statistical reasons uh, that my heart tells me. All right. Sounds good. You know, I my prediction, I'm going to have to say Splice. And I think you kind of put it right on the spot, Harry. Just looking at the previous Slayers, they won not just by a little bit. They won 50-33. to 33 and 50 to 36. That's a pretty dominating win right there. 24 and 27. Uh, if Splice can play that type of Slayer going into this, it's going to be pretty, pretty upsetting here. Or pretty, not upsetting, it's going to be pretty tough here for the Luminosity guys. I've had enough of these numbers of yours, though. My heart <laughs> tells me LG. I'm sticking with my heart for this all game. All right, all right. Regret Slayer, obviously all about the Plasma Caster, but majority will be about that Overshield. Coming up every two minutes, you see teams for around 30 seconds fight around that bottom middle control, grab the Overshield, and then get back up high. Rotate around from the Carbine side, from base to base. It's going to be L-Town to pick up the first Plasma Caster, but right now Boo Boo and the Splice Boys battling for this Overshield. It's going to be Falcon! Wow. to get it, but great job out of Luminosity. Burn. They burned the camouflage right there. Excuse me, the overshield right there. What a big play out of Shotzi. That was three dead for his team, and he managed to get a kill on the caster guy pushing into their spawns. You have to think that player was a little overextended to give up a free death when they have so such a number in advantage. Guys, if you're just tuning in, you're watching Splice versus LG. We're in game number seven of winner's bracket round number one. We're gonna see if Splice can move on, or if is it going to be LG? Be sure to join the conversation using the hashtag HaloWC. Let us know who you think is going to win on Twitter. Tweet us nonstop throughout the day. Or if you're in the Twitch chat, send us some emojis, some emotes. Let us know who you think is going to win. This is kind of what we were talking about. Regret Slayer as a game type. Look at the height that Luminosity have right now. Three players up high. And as a result, look at the kill feed. They get a couple of kills on the board. Two players from both sides fighting over Carbine right there. Luminosity winning that battle means Splice will actually be trapped in a base, but they did just get a split spawn right there. But this is so big, they didn't push this last guy. They knew they had one player in blue, and they kind of baited the open areas of the map and didn't overcommit. I think that's going to end up being a very smart play as Saiyan stays up to top par. But we see Sal, that's L-Town down low, and Nim still in the opposite base. They're very split on where they wanted to be, and they just had three dead. They had a four-on-one advantage. Ninja now making a push by himself here over by the car side. Has a player above him and a player in level two the base, so he's going to play this a bit sneaky, trying to stay alive. He gets spotted, though. Nice splinter grenade. Wow. Picks up the kill there on Boo Boo Doo Boo. Quick get out of jail free card. <laughs> Red my mind. Overshield coming up soon, so watch for the battle around bottom middle right here. Obviously the caster coming up. That's a good counter to the overshield as well as the plasma pistol at top carbine. But the overshield coming up very soon. Don't forget it was falcated who burnt the last one. So we'll see if Luminosity can grab the next overshield. It was an extremely late first OS of the game though. It, it didn't come up until around 40. They still have time right now to apply pressure to spawns and drop down. This is Luminosity's overshield if they play it right. L-Town trying oh. to get some eyes here. Looks like that overshield's going to be burned by Saiyan, though. 19 to 14. Three down for LG, and a nice, nice play call here from L-Town. Realizing that he's getting caught, trying to stay alive. Could have gotten the trade, but you know what? I think he did as best as he could right there, just trying to buy more time for his teammates to spawn up and get out of their base so they're not getting trapped off at spawn. Over here on the other side, Victory X now trying to make a move out alongside his teammate, but he's going to get pegged and pushed right back into the base. And they'll pick up Shooter, though. Now they can make this push. That was a big, big play out of Ninja. Managed to get a pick after crouching down to bottom needles. Ended up with the caster here as well as he retreats back to red. This is going to be all of LG stuck in red base. It's very important that they make a push out together as a team as Ninja ends up getting perfected by Shooter. Maybe a little too far extended out of the base there. Yeah, definitely felt like he could have maybe hung back there, but just a bit. But overall, look at this. It looks like Luminosity was able to capitalize on this charge here and pick up a few kills. 23 to 17. Shotzi taking down Saiyan, barely staying alive. 
Got a few teammates here over on pink side, so he's gonna move on over towards the car side. He's got plasma pistol in hand. Switches over to the pistol, gets a nade down into car two as well. Got a player up above. Gonna have OS coming up. Tries to do the sneaky jump up, but he gets hit by a grenade, so that will push him right back down. Gets a call out here of a player right two of the base. That's gonna be Victory X. Picking up the headshot, the protector kill. Getting some plasma pistol shots, and look at this. Shotzi is just shooting absolutely everything. Every corner he turns, he's putting damage into everyone. All time with a big double right there, and that means Luminosity now have a six point lead here in game number seven. Don't forget, this is the same Luminosity team that almost beat Envious at Vegas in a game seven. If they can win this next, excuse me, win this game seven and win the next overshield engagement, they're gonna be in such a healthy position going forward to win this series. L-Town making a move up to top mid. Splice has got to make a quick turnaround right now. Down by nine. They have got to do something. They do not want to let Luminosity get to 40 kills, and they're still hanging out in the 20s. That was a huge, huge play out of Cam, I believe. Burning that overshield the second it spawns up. LG has had the exact time for every overshield. Yes, they got two burns, but those are deaths that they can afford to give up at this time in the game. It is more important to secure the overshield's burn than it is to give up the overshield to the other team. That's a great job by them to recognize that and rush it immediately. Shooter is going to go down. They're going to be down by 10 on the side of Splice. Still 35 to 25. L-Town now pushing up. It just seems like these guys on Splice, they're getting trades, they're getting kills, but they're not able to stay alive and just get a two-for-one trade or a three-for-one trade. And now we're seeing LG actually even pull away a little bit more. 37 now actually to 27, still only a 10 kill. 38 to 27. I have to ask, Tawi, how do you play this if you're Luminosity right now? Do you let Splice kind you of... continue doing exactly what yeah, you're doing? Right now that say. is applying so much pressure, it's hard for them to focus on where they really need to be because they're getting shot from multiple directions when they're trying to make pushes out. They're unable to get control up top, and LG has had spawn control for the majority of the game. Two players, just that's three players falling down right now. A 11 kill game, this is gonna be tough for Splice to be able to come back. Yeah, Splice isn't really able to just rally back right now because they're just getting so much pressure, getting down to one shot. Shots he pokes out, he's down to one shot. Nobody able to do anything. Great teamwork there again. You're gonna see Victory X pick up a kill. Falcated. Falls down, Sane staying That's alive here, 45 to 32. At this point, it looks like Luminosity is gonna be able to close this one out here in any moment. You've got OS coming up as well. LG is just hanging out down here, ready for this next overshield as well. Two down for LG. This would be a miracle of a comeback if we saw Splice make this happen. A great job oh. by Cam to get a clutch double in a two on one right there. Great job by him as they have a four on two advantage with the overshield. A win all but guaranteed at this point. That's absolutely crazy from Luminosity. This is the last kill of the game right here in Luminosity. They win a game seven versus Splice. Splice dropping down to the losers. Wow, what a series that was. That's absolutely crazy. Luminosity speeding the game up right when it mattered, not allowing that last overshield to come into effect. Even when it did come up, they got the slays and they picked up the power up and that was GG. Victory Game X. seven, Victory X right there, a positive seven with those seven assists as well. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Xfinity desk with our Xfinity post game interview with none other than Ninja from Luminosity after an amazing performance here down to the wire. Game seven, you guys pulled it out, but yes. the first two slayers though, I gotta talk about what this. I gotta talk to this about. Yeah, talk like, to. Yeah. I, I can't talk speak. to me. I'll be this. I'm, you I'm can still, talk to this about it. I'm still shocked. I'm still shocked. Dude. You guys lost the two slayers. Yes. The first two ones. And yeah. It was pretty. It was, I'm gonna say it. It was a blowout. It was pretty bad. Both both. Of them. 50-36, 50-33. Yeah. Game five though was a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Or game seven was a little bit different. Absolutely. What what was different about that slayer compared to the first slayers you guys played? Um, we throughout the entire series, we're still. I mean, dude, we're still learning, man. Like as a team. And this whole series was like, we need to stop doing this because that's what we lost. Then we won the game and it's like, we did this, we communicated well, that's why we won that game. And then it was because we like pretty much traded games and it's like, we choked again, we have to stop overextending. And then finally we get to game seven and we're already like, we're pumped off that last win. Uh, and we're very comfortable on our regret start strat. So we knew um, just, we if we came out hot right away, like it'd be just consistency, listen to each other and no dumb deaths and, and we'll win. And that's exactly what happened.
you guys seem to adapt to other teams' play styles extremely well, especially in between games, notably in tournament play. And especially when it comes to objective games, is there something that you're doing to address like objective efficiency that's different than past teams? Um, Not throwing EG out there. No, right? no, 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 no. I think uh, we just do a really good job. Justin always helps us, obviously, keep our focus on the power-ups. Um, but I think that like we just realize how fast they're playing and we usually know how a team is going to be, if they're going to be super aggressive or um, if they're definitely going to be more of a baiting team. And we figure that out pretty quickly. And then after that, we usually talk about how we're going to get that overshield and camouflage. Like on Eden, there was a couple of times where we were just like, like they're going to bait it. And we still, we got the burn a couple of times, but like we knew they were going to have rockets, blue sneaky, and they did like twice. Uh, and for, I mean, the, uh, I would say it really is just, seeing how like the first couple of minutes of the game go and then after that we just start saying if we need to over, like overextend more and rotate more a lot faster and try to out rotate them or if we need to just be a more passive and against this team it was like yeah. a combination of both mm -hmm. in between games like sometimes yeah sometimes they're super fast and sometimes they they bait it and like we kind of just are like we just call out hey they're clearly playing slow and baiting it like just chill all right last question you guys match up against Optic Gaming next. <clears throat> yeah. But that's tomorrow. You guys are done playing for today. You can get some rest. Absolutely. Rest up, warm up in the morning, maybe even uh, keep playing to warm up tonight. Slip a little poison in their food. They get food poisoning. Wait, what? I don't think we're going I, down that road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think we're going. I didn't hear anything. I didn't hear anything either. I didn't see anything. Greenwall's got a lot of fans. Optic Gaming. <laughs> <laughs> that was food poisoning, not actual. I don't want to get, you know. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Optic Gaming, though, matching up against these guys. Yeah. What what is your team's mindset? And you, obviously, we all know they are the best Halo team in the game right now. Yes. So how do you go into them and and like, just prepare? And pre yeah. How do you, how do you beat Optic Gaming? Um, I think we've played against them, uh, you know, a couple times in scrims, and usually I perform pretty well. Not me personally, but my team does pretty well against them in tournament play. Take a couple games, or even have like really close series. Even though it's four nothing, like we'll get four would or three would Like the games are like one flag cap a couple points in strongholds, a slayer by five. So going up against them, the first thing we have to notice is that they're human. Like, they, they can lose, they bleed, you know what I mean? They've lost before in, the, in this year to, uh, to Envy at St. Louis, I believe. So as long as we are just winning our fights, simple fights, and not, uh, not over-challenging when we don't need to, I mean, I think that's actually one of, the, one of their weaknesses is they are so reliant. They're not reliant on their shots, but they're comfortable knowing that they'll probably win the majority of their fights. And if we're losing our fights and, like... The, that's going to be it. So if we're winning yeah. our fights and then realizing when they are going to start baiting themselves and not challenging to the death, and then we don't overextend and we use teamwork. Like, we're, getting, we're getting deep into it. Absolutely. Take advantage of that. I guess I know, there's I'm some with serious you. depth. I'm with you. I'm right I'm there. Saying, that's I'm what's right going to happen, though. Like, yeah. you know, they're, yeah. gonna, they're, gonna, they're a team that's going to realize, like, okay, guys, like, like they're out shooting us. Stop overchallenging or something just, like that. Just hearing you talk about it just goes to show, like, how much – how, how deep this game is and how oh, much yeah. you have to go into it, uh, the ins and outs of not just the game, but each game type, mm -hmm. being stellar at every single one of them, being good at all of them. Uh, but Ninja, thanks for having us. Dude, thank you guys for always uh, just having me up here, man. Love yeah. being up here. So cool. Hope you guys enjoyed the series. Guys, we're going to be right back with one more match to close out the night. We'll see you soon.